Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So sad news yesterday. Ed Asner passed. Ed Asner, Ed Asner was 91 years old. And great guy. We had the opportunity during our labor history tour uh, to meet him. I got to I got to do a short interview with him. Uh, the kids sat on his lap. We took pictures. Great guy. Uh, he was in, I think it was Kansas City is where we were. Um, and he was doing a one-man show on FDR. And just, just a really good, solid, decent human being. And really a strong union guy. Um, sad, sad his passing. Um, you know, he had 91 good years. Um, but here to share some thoughts on his on his passing and, and what he meant. Uh, I've asked Greg Palace to come talk with us. Uh, Greg is an investigative journalist, author of numerous books, uh, too many for me to lay, name off. Uh, but if you go to his website, gregpalace.com, they are all there. Greg, thanks for taking time for us. Glad to be with you again. So I, you know, I saw that you know Ed Asner had done you know some readings of your book, and I go you know I wanted to get some thoughts. Yeah, well, not only did he do some readings of my book, but he also uh, you know one of my books was the best democracy money can buy, and he read the chapter about my investigation of Walmart called "What Price a Storgasm," and he, as usual, he was he was insanely brilliant. I had all these great actors doing parts like Alec Baldwin and others, but I hope they're not jealous. But Ed blew him off the stage. Uh, the uh, the other is he was also a uh, a cameo. He played Santa Claus in my film, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, uh, explaining how Wall Street works. It's just brilliant. And he was also a, a billionaire. Uh, and um, you know, he was just funny as could be. And I was and I was telling his stories. <laughs> Some people don't like it very much, but we're shooting the film, and he has to play. And I was afraid to tell him. I showed up and I was afraid to tell him, listen, you're going to have to put on a Santa outfit and a goofy beard. And, and he's, he was game. He said, fine, no problem. And he's, you know, one take wonder. He did it brilliantly. And then, um, uh, but, you know, he was in his 80s. And of course, uh, with his prostate, he had to take a, a bathroom break, but where he's all wired up and it's difficult and he didn't want to stop the production. So he said, the heck with it and just <laughs> let it rip and took off his soaking pants and then shot the scenes in his underpants. And it was hilarious. Santa Claus in underpants and this billionaire in a top hat and tuxedo coat, but with his, uh, in his underpants. It was just wonderful. But you know, he did it, by the way, he, he worked on these projects, by the way, with my film, my books, et cetera, without pay. And, and there was a reason. He believed that I had something to tell people that ought to be told. And in particular, you brought up that he's a union guy. And I want to tell you, Ed was a steel worker. The only reason he's an actor, he's got laid off at the steel mills. He was happy to have a good union job in Chicago area. He was like, he was from Kansas City, by the way. And, uh, you know, un good union guy and, and a guy of great feeling. And one story that's really, really important to tell is, you know, everyone, he's known and all the obits, you know, basically say Lou Grant. Uh, for those who remember the Lou Grant and the Mary Tyler Moore show. You know, the, the irascible guy, that was really him. He really played it with heart. And here's the thing. It was the number one show in America. And not only that, as my uh, Swiss in-laws tell me, it was the number one show in, uh, in uh, Switzerland and throughout the world. It was the top show on this planet. Uh, they were all, oh, my God, you know Lou Grant. But um, it was Reagan was president. It was 1986, and uh, and Mary Noel Nuns had been murdered. About four of them had been shot in the head, and we saw these horrible photos of these executed nuns by right-wing death squads in Salvador, backed by Ronnie Reagan as part of his, you know, Stop the Commies uh, operation, supposedly the Mary Noel Nuns. So Ed, who wasn't really that political at the time, he had strong feelings, but he hadn't involved in politics. He agreed to go to a press conference and 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 uh, come out against, uh, believe it or not, against killing nuns. How about that? Now, you think that that's not too controversial. No. I mean, I don't kill nuns. I don't think you do, Rick. Uh, so he's against nun killing. But uh, the the heads of the Screen Actors Guild and, the, and uh, Ronnie Reagan and his crew absolutely went after Ed, literally saying he was a danger to the nation. 
and uh, the sponsors just all canceled. You know, wouldn't uh, the the sponsors began canceling their sponsorships? But he he still was the biggest, so he's going to get sponsors. But the network canceled him. The network canceled him for his political beliefs, and they canceled the number one show in America because he came out publicly against killing nuns in in El Salvador. But he rather than kiss the uh, network's ass, he said, "Take your show and shove it." He was blacklisted again for a while because of that, but then uh, came back with a roar. And you know, you know him from Up and other things. Yeah, that's how my you kids know him. This is the guy from Up. Yeah, yeah. Great voice. What a voice. That's why he's the best voice actor in America. And uh, I was just thrilled to have him lend his voice and his Santa Claus to my films. No, he he will most certainly be missed, and uh, I was saddened because he was he was so gracious with with my kids, and he was he was he was so good with his time to give to to give us you know some time to talk about unions and workers and and and, and his experience because he went through that he was a steel worker and that he played football there at the high school that we that we had seen him at, um you know it was it was one of those memorable things that my kids won't forget, and and, and I remember him just being a, a true salt of the earth guy, uh, and I wanted to you know. You know, pay him a little tribute there. And also what's great is that the, he took over the Screen Actors Guild, which had been Ronnie Reagan's operation. So the progressive did take the guild for a while. They've lost power since. But uh, I got to tell you, that was, you know, kind of a democratic socialism was his strong belief because he said that's, you know, I'm a union man. And he stayed a union man his whole life. That's really defined him. Yep. No, I'm... I'm... He was a good guy, and rest in peace. He will be missed. Uh, I, I want to get your thoughts about what's going on in, down in Texas. Evidently, uh, the the Texas legislature rammed through their their voter theft bill. Uh, it's going to go to Abbott's desk if it hasn't already to be signed. I want to get your thoughts. Well, look, obviously the Republicans are afraid of voters. You know, they're they're basically taking the position: if we let people vote, we lose. Uh, that's exactly how it is. I mean. There, you know, the, the, of course, the canard of, of voter fraud, you know, and uh, uh, it's it's very dangerous stuff. You know, they, it's simple things like they they don't want to have drive in voting. You know, if you've been to Texas, people, you know, move, live in their cars. No, OK, that's no good. Uh, you have to have an excuse from your mommy and your doctor and your uh, juju man to to get an absentee ballot. So, you know, you have to you have to stand in line with the maskless COVID morons uh, in Texas to vote then. You know, they're just dumb tricks. They just don't want people to vote. And they're also, of course, spending a lot of time. One thing that wasn't noticed, and it's not even in the bill, so it, it's dangerous to really slip through, is that uh, Texas has joined a, a program called ERIC. Now, what does ERIC do? ERIC is a program that, um, that uh, identifies people people to remove from the voter rolls. Now, why do you remove people from the voter rolls? Well, because supposedly they left Texas. But I did an analysis of this list. It's called the ERIC list. I did an analysis for Black Voters Matter with the top experts in the country. I mean, I, I got in the, you know, you know who knows where you live? Amazon knows where you live yeah. right now. eBay knows where you live. So I hired, I literally got the guys from Amazon and eBay to, to check their claims that these people have left Texas. And they said, you know, a third of this list is baloney. These people are right there. We deliver stuff to these people. And then I actually, well, I did something simple. I called them up. I met with people and they're still there. So Texas is, is literally removing a couple hundred thousand. That's not small. A couple hundred thousand people from the voter rolls on the grounds that they moved. They're still there and they're going to end up not getting their ballots or, you know, showing up and being bounced from the polls. And, you know, not surprisingly, Rick, it's people with names in Texas like Hernandez and Johnson, black, basically um, voters of color and the color's blue. They know what they're doing. No, no, they absolutely know what they do, they're doing. I mean, it's just like, you know, the kind of rage that we're seeing at these school board meetings. The, the right knows what they're doing. They know which buttons to push. They know which people to, to suppress. Uh, they, they, they've got the game plan down. Because, look, they've got, a, they've got a slew of think tanks that they pay the, the best and the brightest huge sums of money to devise horrible schemes to usurp democracy. That, there's nothing new here. I mean, you've been, you've been reporting on this for, for now decades. Yes. And, you know, that with Ed, Ed Asner's help as Santa. But, um, 
Yeah, and, and behind it, by the way, Ed played a billionaire in, in The Best Democracy Money Could Buy, which you can, by the way, download free in Ed's honor today at gregpalace.com or this week. And um, because we're making a point, as you said, this ain't cheap. Stealing votes ain't cheap business. You need billionaires behind it. And the billionaires behind this operation, for example, are the Bradley family of Milwaukee. Now, you should, as a union man, they should be in your pantheon of people to pee on because <laughs> not write a pee on for, but um, they owned they owned the Allen Bradley manufacturing plants in uh, Milwaukee, which were the biggest employers in the city union jobs. They sold off the company, sent all of the jobs, all those Allen Bradley manufacturing union jobs went to China. They're gone. And they used the billions that they made. They literally sliced off $2 billion to support right-wing causes, in particular, vote suppression. So you can't remove the union busting from the vote suppression. They go together because, you, you know, here's the rule. As I, say, as, as I say in the film with Ed, you can't take away someone's job and not take away their right to vote to complain about losing their job. Exactly. And that's where the billionaires come in. So I'm glad you brought up the money because that's what we got to do. Follow the money. Because it's always the money. I mean, it's, and it's not just Bradley. I mean, I look at that Diane Hendricks, the woman who owns the ABC construction company, who you know, famously on video, almost orgasmic, asking Scott Walker, when do we get right to work? Uh, you know, and she was all orgasmic over the fact that she was going to be able to deny her workers uh, the ability to the right to join and form unions so she could cheat them out of wages, benefits, make horrible working conditions so she could get richer. Yeah. And we had we had a, uh, a brilliant jokester call Scott Walker pretending to be David Koch. And he practically had Scott Walker down on his hands and knees barking. And, you know, so Koch is, of course, infamous supporter of so-called right to work, basically, uh, per, you know, removing your First Amendment to the Constitution right to free association and join that union. And, um, you know, so it's union busting, pure and simple. They, you know, it's a profit center. So politicians are a profit center to these guys. And that's the problem. When you're supporting progressives, you're not getting anything. You're not getting like a tax break. You're not getting a contract. You're not getting anything in return. But the right wing guys, they're they're not supporting candidates. They're investing and they're getting a massive rate of return, yep. a massive rate of return. And that's the problem. They have turned politics into a profit center and we're picking up the bill. No, my grandfather always used to say, if a rich guy's going to take a buck out of your out of his pocket to tell you you don't need something, you better get spend two to get it, uh, because they understand return on investment. Because they wouldn't be spending that money if it wasn't coming back in multiples. And and it is. I mean, you, you a couple of hundred thousand dollars in lobbying, they get billions in tax breaks. Uh, it's it's a good investment if you can get it, I guess. But the sad reality is the rest of us end up getting screwed. And what we end up with is the scenario where we're at now where the working class of this country is pitted against each other and the rage machine keeps feeding this anger. So we never actually solve the problems that are making us really angry while we're getting screwed consistently year after year after year. Uh, it's really a, it's really a masterful scheme they've devised. Well, it's brilliant. Like look at, you know, like Leslie Moonvase, uh, who was head of CBS said, look, you may complain about Donald Trump, but for CBS, He's money. He's ratings. So the it paid. It was a profit center for them to uh, basically give a platform to hatred, to give a platform to the to this you know crazy misguided anger and deflect from the real you know the the the, the real guys that are taking the money out of your pocket and blame it on you know Mexicans and uh, union guys and whatever. And you know, that's ex you know that's exactly what what's happened. And so again. You know, I'm glad you're bringing it back to the money because the money is is the game. It's not just, oh, these guys are trying to these, you know, uh, uh, guys in Texas are trying to stop voters from voting. They are trying to stop people from getting in the way of their owners, of their landlords, the people that own their souls. Yep. And, and the thing is, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the. Uh, to the school board meetings that are going on and the, the new breed of insurrectionists, because I'm expecting, you know, a January 6th every couple of days now as these nitwits start going to these these uh, 
uh, these school board meetings. And I don't know if you saw today in Georgia, uh, a bunch of these anti-mask idiots shut down a, vac a vaccination site. And I'm going, you know, this is all this is all planned, organized and funded by our billionaire class to continue to cause chaos and division. So that, again, the old Jay Gould quote, I can easily pay half the working class to murder the other half. Here it is in action over nothing but a piece of cloth that someone wears over their face. Well, we could do the I say we do the Ed Asner uh, response. If you're not going to wear a mask, I'm not going to wear pants. It's real simple. I mean, you can't go, you know, how dare this restaurant make me wear pants when I walk in? What do you mean I can't serve on a jury with no pants on? You know, <laughs> you know so like I haven't heard any of these people complain about the pants requirement, but, you know, or, you know, uh, it's, it's, oh, I have no freedom. What? I want to, you want me to stop at a red light? How dare you? You know, it's a good thing that CDC isn't in charge of that. They'd say they just make stopping your red lights kind of a rec strong recommendation. Stop at red lights. But that's an, that's another question. We still have to get over that fear of uh, of uh, courage at even at the top levels. So we have to fight back. By the way, how about suing some of these mask holes if you get COVID? If some jerk slams into my car in a parking lot because he's like an idiot and not looking, I can sue him. What about if he kills my grandma because he's not wearing a mask or getting vaccinated and he works in a nursing home? Come on, guys. Yep. You know, it's about time we strike back. How about <laughs> how about that? But I like the Ed rule. No mask, no, no pants. pants. All right. I, 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 I'm not going to go there with you. But uh, <laughs> if you want to be, I'm, I'm going to be, I'll be happy to, to stand there and support with you. Uh, but I, I hope they take their deworming drugs and and drink the Clorox and all of that. We could we could do we could do with fewer of them. But Greg, as always, I appreciate the work that you guys do, and always great talk with you and having you on the show. Uh, thanks so much. See you at GregPalace.com. There you go. Uh, good stuff, Greg Palast, gregpalast.com. Uh, the best democracy money buy, can buy is the uh, best book I've ever read. Uh, I highly suggest it. No, there's a bunch of other ones, Armed Madhouse and, and the Billionaire Bandits and all of those. Go to gregpalast.com, pick them up. A uh, quick break, right back. Stick around. You listen to The Rick Smith Show. <laughs> Saving work in America, one show at a time. The Rick Smith Show.